Hey, Ryan Borden here, and I'm going to go over for GSA Website Contact and GSA Capture Breaker, and I suppose the same could be said for um, any GSA product or anything that, that directly integrates with Capture Breaker for troubleshooting. So if you have a project and in Capture Breaker or any other GSA program or really any program that directly integrates with Capture Breaker, again, uh, and you go in here and you add, I'm just going to clear this out so that we start fresh, and we add GSA Capture Breaker as a capture service, and then you can set the retries to whatever you want. So we have it. It should just work. From here on, you click OK, and captures from this should be sent over to Capture Breaker, and it should work. In fact, uh, in mo many cases, they talk, and if this isn't even running, if Capture Breaker shut down, Website Contact will start Capture Breaker up, or if it crashes, it'll restart it. Um, I'm not sure if they have kept that functionality, but I've seen it happen before. So um, it should just work. I don't know if this uses uh, inter-process communication or what the protocol it uses to talk between the two is, but it does travel from here through Windows to here. Um, they're not directly uh, uh, talking, I don't believe. Anyways, so um, if that doesn't work for some reason, if something's messed up, which can happen, you can have bad DLL files in Windows, or it could just happen. I've seen IPC go down or other things. So if that happens, here's the workaround. Uh, you can go back into Capture Breaker, or Website Contact rather, or again, any GSA product or any product that directly integrates with Capture Breaker here. You can go in here and set it up the same way you would for any program that does not directly integrate. So we're kind of doing a workaround, right? So we're going to add a capture service and then we're going to emulate it over here, right? So any program that does not directly integrate with Capture Breaker, you can go into that program and pick like say image typers, for example, and we can go down here and do image typers and pick it as image typers and you just make in any login and any password that's at least eight characters usually and put it in right and i'm going to delete this one just for the sake of it and then you go over here under capture breaker and go to options and you set this as a web server and then it's going to do this starting web server now there's troubleshooting documents and information on the gsa forums and around for if this doesn't work because this is basically running and listening as a web server but especially if you're running this on an actual server, like on a VPS, um, Windows IIS can also run as a web server, and you can only have one running at a time. So you may have to go in, if you're on a VPS, and shut down IIS. Um, you can Google for how to do that. It's just a service, and you shut it down so that you can do a web browser. In fact, I think I even have a video on this somewhere on YouTube um, from years ago. But it's the same problem that's been around for the better part of a decade so you, you just can only have one web server right so you run it as a web server and you go down here and you say to emulate right now it's emulating all of these services you could actually uncheck all of them and then just go to image typers right and once it's running as image typers then you're good and what you're going to do is um, you can do the test and browser thing. I don't even know how this really works. But, um, oh, you can upload a CAPTCHA to test and see if it works. So let's see if I can find one. All right, so I've got one here. Let's see if this works. I don't even know if it will. Unable to break this CAPTCHA. So um, we do know it works, but I just got a CAPTCHA that wasn't supported. Or maybe I didn't even turn it on because I don't have all of them. Oh, here it goes. Unknown engine. <laughs> here it is down here. Uh, you can see I was messing around with it. Um, and it did solve some of them, but I was using another program for this. Anyways, um, it doesn't doesn't know what it is because probably the drop shadow fouled it up and it didn't recognize it. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It is working because it would it respond with an error here and we would not see this CAPTCHA in down here. So the browser is connected, which means other programs are going to be connected. And I do not know. Let us see. So let's close out of this and go in here and test this. Um, we should be at a balance. Your balance is connection was successful. Uh, it's saying that it's a simulation. So I should have just done that in the first place. But it does work that way. And then we can probably test a CAPTCHA, um, an internal CAPTCHA. And it looks like it solved it. Answer is correct. So we can see that it is now working. And it's basically passing. 
um, website contact, if you care, passes this out to Windows and the host file in Windows, rather than sending the request off to image typers, which is an actual service, it's rerouting it over here to GSA Web Capture Breaker and then Capture Breaker solving it and sending it back. So it's connected. So that's all you have to do to set it up. It's super important in website contact that you do not this bypass host file and use real IP of capture services in any GSA service or any other program that uses this. Um, you want this to be unchecked. You don't want to bypass the host file because it uses the host file to make this all work. If you select this, then it will try to send these captures to the image typer service as a company and it will ignore Capture Breaker. So leave that unchecked for this particular workaround and that is how you can do it. Now if it works, great, you can stop here. If it does not work, you can proceed with the rest of this video which we're going to look at two things. One, um, quickly how you can disable IIS because the most common issue you're going to run into is when you choose web server, whether it's this 127 or you choose 0000, 000 um, or your actual IP address, etc., then what's going to happen is it's going to come up and say there's already a web server running. And so really what you got to do is just pop open Google and put in the air and you're probably going to get it, but how to disable IIS, Internet, um, it's Microsoft Internet Information Services. On Windows Server, see, you can see there's different ones. So you're going to put in your server version. So let's say you have 2012, Windows 2012. You gotta, got to get your thing and how to remove IIS in Windows 2012. You're just going to put it in, follow this guide, and it's going to remove it. Once that's done, then you can go back in here to... You may have to restart the server. I'm not sure. It depends on your version of Windows and how it's set up. You can go back in here and run this as a web server. If 127.0.0.1 doesn't work, try 000 or your IP address and then just restart it. And you can see what's going to work. Um, I'm not going to explain this because you need to know what you're doing to get into this. But so anyways, that's how you set it up. Capture services. Um, there's nothing really there in the workaround, but there is something really important over here on this only try to solve a success rate if you run this way up and you've got this at like 98 percent for example then what's going to happen is and you've run this slider over here because they're connected then it's going to look like the integration the default integration isn't working because it's never going to send captures over here and try to solve them because this is through the roof so I would either leave this at 20% or disable this, especially for testing. You can even just uncheck it and disable it to see if things are working. Because again, the whole point of this, the built-in integration here is the best. If you can use this Capture Breaker one, it's the best. However, this is just for a workaround if that doesn't work. The other thing I would say is to go down here, you can right click here and this um, log enabled. So if you have log, enabled and there's no check mark there it's like see now there's a check mark if you take that away then you're not going to get a log here so you're not going to know that it's working i mean it'll give you some numbers down here still so you can look at that but if you're looking at this log then um you know make sure the log is enabled and you can turn on auto scroll or not it doesn't matter but um that's just to make sure okay maybe it is actually connected and you just thought it wasn't because the log was turned off well make sure the logs turned on if that's what you're looking at but that is how you can troubleshoot that element and the last thing that you want to look at is the actual host file you can break things um messing around with files in windows if you don't know what you're doing so don't save a bunch of random stuff in here but i'm going to show you how to do it if you go into your windows explorer and you go into your Windows. So Windows System, I believe it's System 32. It's been a minute since I've done this. And then Drivers, etc., and Host File. There it is. So there it is. Windows System 32 Drivers, etc. And you're going to double click on this. I don't even know. Okay, it, you can open it with Notepad. And it looks something like so. Ooh, I've got my font turned up really large on this. Uh, but you can read it. Right, so all this stuff with pound, this is just notes and information. Nothing of that works. You can see down here, though, all of this is pounded out, so it doesn't matter. Um, 
and you can see here capture breaker now has entries that it has added all of these entries here for all the different services it's emulating right so when we have all these services it added all of this stuff if if your direct integration doesn't work so you proceed with this method and the web server is running but it's still not working and you've double checked that your bypass host file is unchecked if it's still not working then go in here and see if the host file has a, an entry like this with capture breaker in it because if it doesn't then it's not adding it to the host file so what I would do is I wouldn't edit this and by default it won't let you edit it anyway so if you just like if I delete stuff and then try to save it it should tell me no okay I've modified it so I can save it um, but it's gonna tell you no by default so it won't let you actually edit your host file which is which is a good thing because if you go if you this is how the internet works it runs through the host file so if you mess up the host file you mess up your internet more or less in so many words so don't put a bunch of random stuff in here and um, anyways so all you need to know is it'll let you view it and open it in notepad uh, if you can even see it I don't even know if the host file is a hidden file it might be a hidden file you may have to go to control panel if you can't see this as we get into a long video now um, and go into the control panel and go to folder options um, is it here? Let's just type it out. Folder options. I guess it's under here. Yeah, here we go. And we come in here and under view. It's probably set to do not show hidden files and folders. Set it to show hidden files and folders. And then click OK. And here we can see if it takes it away. No, it's not a hidden file. Okay, so you really probably really don't need to do this, but anyways, um, there it is in case for some reason you need to on your version of Windows or something. I don't know. Maybe you made it a hidden file or your network admin did. Anyways, just look in the host file. If it's here, you're good. If there's no entries here, then I would recommend that you restart your whole computer and then go back in here, turn the web server off, and then turn the web server back on and make sure these things are selected and then try again basically is all I'm getting at here it was kind of a little troubleshooting step anyways that's it that's how you can do that and this is actually the process and I have a video on that if you have a program that doesn't directly integrate with capture breaker the way you set it up is by setting up the web server emulating a service and then going into the program itself and running it so that is how you can troubleshoot capture breaker setup not working